Good morning. Um, I, I also wanted to start with a question. Um, we had a, at the speakers' dinner, we had a discussion, um, and someone said, um, we, I think that people want to be led. Um, can you put your hands up if you say, um, I like to have a boss? Who, who likes to have a boss? I don't see too many hands. Who, who is the boss? Oh, a lot of, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> makes it clear. So, uh, I want to t tell you about my story. Um, I had the problems uh, since my primary, primary school with my teachers. Uh, I had some authority problems. So, I think that's one of the main reasons that I started this organization. Um, and I think you can develop yourself the, the best possible way when you are freed from all kinds of uh, structures and people who are telling you what to do. So you should find out yourself what you think is important and that should be leading in your life, like in your private life. Um, this uh, presentation, I called it um, Humanity Above Bureaucracy uh, by Integrating Simplification in the Teal Organization. Um, uh, so some of you have read the book of Frederick Laloux and the Teal Organization. I didn't know, uh, I didn't hear from it before, but we are a Teal Organization as I know now. And we are integrating simplification. So we try to make things simple, where a lot of people want to make the world very complex. And we say, if we make it simple, then it's very easy to, for people to take responsibility. Um, I started in, in a new organization in 2006, at the end of 2006, together with some friends. So I've been an, a district nurse for, for um, 15 years, worked as a nurse. And after that, I became manager, director in two big home care organizations in Holland. And it was amazing to see that um, the idea of the organization was it became more and more professional, but the quality of the service went down and down every year. So, uh, and I was one of the 16 directors, and I said, we are a bit too many of us, and we are just bothering the nurses to do their work. But they didn't agree. So then I had to leave and start something for myself. Uh, we started with four nurses, um, and we started, we, we called it Buurtzorg because it means neighborhood nursing. Uh, and I, my idea was we should focus on the networks in the neighborhood. And that's the, the way I worked myself in the 80s as a district nurse. Um, we just started delivering community health care again as we thought it would be the best possible way. And we started to work together with GPs, with volunteers, with so, uh, occupational therapists, social workers, and so on. At the moment, we have um, 9,700 nurses working all over the country in 850 independent teams. Um, so these, these teams are self-organized. I will tell more about it later. Uh, we have 45 staff at the back office. We don't have a management structure, so we don't have managers, and it's all self-organized. Uh, we only have 15 coaches. Uh, they can be uh, supportive to the teams when the teams need it. So, and when you have a manager, they're always there. Also, when you don't need it. And then it can be a big burden. Um, at the moment, we are taking care for 70,000 patients a year, uh, all kinds of patients. Patients who are terminally ill, patients with chronic diseases, and so on. Um, one of the results of the Dutch policy on home care, and I also see it within the uh, NHS in England. I've, I've, for four years, I've been in England a lot, uh, and I talked with a lot of people within the NHS, and I'm um, curious what one of the coming speakers will tell me about what's happening within the NHS. But what we saw in Holland is that based on the ideas of making uh, healthcare a business led to a lot of uh, fragmentation. So we were delivering activities instead of creating solutions, and that's a very big difference. And it led to a lot of fragmentation, lists with showers and lists with taking care for wounds and so on. Um, but, and, and every nurse had to register it by the minute. So the quality went down and the cost went up because we were doing a lot of things which were, was not really necessary. And we created sometimes more problems than we solved. So that was what I saw. Um, and what you saw also that the education level was going down uh, throughout the years because uh, giving many hours, spending many hours against low cost was very profitable for the organization. 
Um, by working this way, the prognosis were that we would have big capacity problems. Uh, we all have an aging society, so for the coming 10, 20, 30 years, we have to think about how can we have enough workforce to do all the work. The clients, uh, very important, they had to face with a lot of different caregivers, sometimes 40, 50 per month, different people. And imagine that one of your relatives is, has dimen dementia, and every time again you have to explain how it works, what's important for you. You can't build trustful relationships with so many people. When you have more than seven people dealing with your, with your family, then you lose control uh, on your life. So then you are controlled by the others who are coming at your house, and I think you shouldn't want this. And then at, uh, the, the way we were monitoring the results led to not any information about the outcomes. So we, had, we, knew, we know how many hours care we are spending all over the country, but we don't know if it, it's helping anybody. So we spend billions of euros, pounds, euros, and we don't know if people are helped in the best possible way. So we started this organization in 2007. Um, the idea was just create small teams in the neighborhood, uh, nurses who are choosing their own colleagues and organizing everything themselves. And from the start, from the first moment we had this first team, we got nurses all over the country who were phoning, mailing, uh, contacting with us and said, would you come and tell you, us what, what you're doing there in the east of Holland? Um, so I was evening, at, by evening I was at, at, at living rooms of people, nurses, talking about our profession, what's important for nursing. And, and at the end of the evening, they said, when can we start? Because I think this is what we also want. So every time, uh, every evening again, there was in one part of the country, they started just a small revolution and these nurses were just organizing themselves and within two months, usually they were running and they were cost effective. So the risk was very low. They, have their, they build their networks and what they were doing was much better than what they did before in the organization they worked before. So they're doing everything themselves. They talk about how to divide the roles in the team and they um, build their networks based on informal relationships. This is what, what our vision is, that we should support independence. We should focus on the community and we should create healthy communities by working with volunteers, with the families, with uh, formal caregivers from a an, an, an perspective of uh, empowering the people. And that's much more inspiring to do. So if, if you do that every day as a, as, a, as a nurse, then your day is like, uh, every day it's like an, an adventure. So every day you meet people who you, you learn from, um, you can decide yourself on how to deal with everything you, you meet. And a lot of patients feel empowered by the way we are working. And you use the resources of the community. So there are a lot of resources in the community which are not used. So the pressure on the formal care gets bigger and bigger. And we should share it, uh, the formal care with the informal caregivers. That's, uh, and this is, for most nurses, this is very logic. So we are now working in 35 countries. And when I explain this to doctors and nurses, they say, yes, that's what we should want to do. Um, it's all based on self-organization. The idea is just, let's just trust the nurses. You don't need to control them. Um, I don't know any nurse who start the day and say, okay, today I'm going to uh, trouble my patients or tease them or hit them or whatever. Um, so when you trust uh, people, uh, they will take a responsible uh, responsibility. They will feel accountable for what they're doing. Um, so that's what we try to show that it would work very uh, preventive if you work this way. What we did to avoid all the complexity of the system, because like in England and a lot of countries, we built very bureaucratic uh, um, systems with a lot of regulations and administration. We built our own IT company. So um, we, at, at the moment, we, I think we built around 10 companies. Um, and yeah, um, it's, it's very easy just to build the companies, not so. I didn't do it before, but when you start, it's like um, something like a disease. 
it's yeah. Uh, yesterday I was on Dutch television. We started a health insurer, so to threaten the older health insurers to behave otherwise. Um, yes, it's working already. Um, <laughs> It, it's, but we try to reduce the complexity, so it's all dealt with in the IT system, so the nurse can just do what they think they should do. Uh, they spend 10 minutes a day for the administration, and that's it. Um, as I said, um, there's a maximum of 12 nurses because you don't have bigger tables. So they have their own office, and they, in the office they, they talk about their patients and uh, taking care for all the things what's needed. 70% uh, are registered nurses, and in the average home care organization in Holland, it's uh, just 10% are bachelor, uh, registered nurses. They are responsible for their own education budget. And they decide themselves on what they want to be educated in and what's needed. And we say informal networks are much more important than formal structures. So we don't make any contracts with anybody. So we say just do what you think is needed and create your networks which is needed to create good solutions. The, the teams are supported by uh, a training, it's called the solution inter interaction method, solution driven interaction method. Um, we say focus on the solutions, don't spend too much time on the, on the problems and analyzing the problems and who's guilty of the problems and so on, because that's not solving it. So try to focus on how can we in a simple way solve the problems. And then you get these kind of teams, They're very happy. Uh, then you get these kind of patients. This is, um, this is already 105 now. Yes, yes. She so won't like to die. <laughs> yeah, so in, in, uh, in Rot Rotterdam, she's living. Um, so, yes, we have a very active uh, discussion in Holland about euthanasia, but it's not part of the discussion in Rotterdam. Um, <laughs> we have uh, different types of patients, so the idea was. Uh, when you are dealing with problems in the community, it would be nice that you can deal with every kind of problem. So th that's the reason that we say then you need high-skilled nurses. And these nurses have a very big variety on, in their daily practice. So th they, uh, as I said, they learn every day by the things they're doing. And a lot of things we are learning in, in healthcare is based on tacit knowledge. So it's, you can't write it down in protocols and regulations and you shouldn't do it. But you have to talk about it. You have to talk about it with each other and then you can share your knowledge and experience. And when it's about quality, we had a lot of questions when we started, how do you monitor quality? But that at the moment, we are also not monitoring quality. We're just saying that if you have a quality system, then it's something like, like an assurance that you deliver quality. What we said is we are going to monitor the outcome. We want to show what the result is of what we are doing. So, that more, so that's, uh, we're doing that with the Omaha system. It uh, too, takes too long to explain that, but uh, it's a system which uh, monitors um, problems, interventions, and outcome. And at the moment, the Dutch ministry decided to make it a national standard. So it took us six years talking and discussing, but at the end, we uh, succeeded. We focus on roles and activities in the teams. So we said, if you want to work together, think, think about how to, you deal the, with the burdens in the system. The teams have a team compass, so can, they can see how they are doing compared also with other teams. Um, as I already said, they have a high education level and we measure the satisfaction of the clients regularly. And every year we do a, a national research on that. Uh, then about the back office, we, my wife and me, we started uh, together. Uh, she's responsible for the back office, um, and but she's, she, she hates to be called manager or director. So she's just said, I'm just one of the others, uh, and when they need me, just, they just can ask my advice. Um, there are, we have now a turnover of 315 million euro, and we don't have a CFO. So I don't, if, if there are financial people here, but um, you don't need, um, no, <laughs> sorry. No, I, I, I would say before I became a nurse, I studied economics. For, for, yes, I was promised to be a very uh, good economist, but it didn't work out. Um, the, the, the head of take care of the uh, bureaucracy, uh, so the nurses can just do their daily work and enjoy it. But of course, the care need to be charged. Uh, we are paid by the health insurers. Most of the money comes from the health insurers. Uh, and of course, they want to have their salaries. 
but we are, have now almost 10,000 people, 10,000 salaries per month, and it's dealt by, by, by three women. So these three women taking care, and the average organization has 25 to 30 people um, when you talk about these amounts of employees. And we're making some financial statements. It's all on the one page, so it's very easy. We have a very simple cost structure. And when you keep it simple, then you can avoid a lot of coordination and a lot of management. This is about the IT system. Uh, a friend of mine was uh, an, an quite a visionary. He, in 2005, he uh, designed our IT strategy for the coming years, and now a lot of other organizations are using it. Um, and um, but what, I've, what I've seen, what I noticed is that uh, communication, knowledge exchange, information can be dealt with in a quite a different way when you use IT in a proper way. So all the nurses are working with iPads, so they're working, they're making the care plans together with the patients, and everything you need is in the system uh, at the point of care. So, um, and I'm doing my, my um, blogs on, on, on the community. So it's, we, we started um, sharing information, sharing knowledge, and it was 2007, so Facebook was uh, growing very fast. So we said, let's make our own Facebook, and this way we are sharing ideas. So some, uh, every two weeks I write my blog, and then I get a lot of comments on it. And then I say, okay, if these comments are going a certain direction, then we say, okay, let's make it our new policy. So that's our policy. I don't write strategy notes. I don't write policy notes. And I should advise everyone to stop doing that. Because it's not, no, it takes a lot of time. And you think you're doing very serious things. But <laughs> no, nobody, no, when you don't do it, you see that nobody's waiting for it. So that's, <laughs> really. So, and, and, and that's what I noticed. Because I was, in my former job, I was director of innovations. And I was, really, I was the, um, the, the champion in making plans. Uh, and when I didn't do it anymore, nobody was asking me, why are you not making plans anymore? So. Uh, but all the, the uh, things in the, where the IT system is dealing with uh, creates um, a, a common feeling, uh, shared values. All the nurses, they have focus on the neighborhood, but they feel like they are connected with the other teams by the internet. So it's... it's um, a network organization, uh, and, and what, what makes it very special for me is that um, it, it doesn't lead to, to problems, and the problem solving, um, um, the, 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 the way the teams are solving their own problems is, is growing throughout the years. So and a lot of things are going horizontally, so then I can't just go to England and talk at conferences. Um, what we don't do is we don't have management meetings, write policy notes, strategic documents. We don't have HR department. So if there are HR people, try to find another, you uh, know. Um, year plans um, and other useless things. So, <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I don't want to offend anybody, and it's just the starting of the day. We are, we're growing very fast. So um, every, every month we have 150 to 200 nurses coming to work for us and we don't know how to stop it. <laughs> so it's, yeah, it's, it's a, now we have real problem because we have uh, more and more 65 plus nurses who don't want to quit their work. They can retire, but they don't want to retire. So we have more than 200 now who say, can I go on for a year or a year? So I said, of course. Uh, we are in the whole country now. We are doing new innovations, youth care, domestic social care, mental care, pensions for rehabilitation, hospices, physiotherapy, Occupation. It's, all these things are um, just starting by itself. So we're not organizing it, but someone says, oh, it's a good idea to have also a youth care part. Then we say, okay, let's try it. And then it's going very well. And then say, okay, let's gr let, it, let grow what what's can grow. We started international, we started in Sweden, US, I just came back from China and Taiwan. I didn't know, did you see that the president of China and Taiwan met? It was just after my visit. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I, met, I met with the first lady of Taiwan. So I, uh, she even gave me a, pres a present. So it's, um, it's influencing everything, you see. <laughs> um, it's, it's be, 
as, as I now understand, we created a new theoretical mo model. Um, Frederic Laloux uh, wrote a lot of nice things about it. Um, and I recognized uh, the first time I talked with him, he, 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 I had an idea that he was the first one who really understood what we were doing. Because someone was, uh, a lot of people were saying, oh, it's just about the self-organizing teams or, or self-steering teams. But it's how, how do you deal with, with uh, meaningful things in your daily practice? Then Shada Nandram, she wrote a book, uh, Organizational Innovation by Integrating Simplification. And she said there are three main principles she discovered in Bootsorg. She said the needing principle, so do what needed, don't do what's not needed. The rethinking principle, try to find out what works. And then the common sense principle, just use your common sense like you do at home. So that's a very important one. Uh, then you get these kind of teams. Uh, we measure the satisfaction of the employees because the idea was that the pressure on the nurses would be too big when they have to make all the decisions themselves. So that were our competitors were they saying in, in Holland. So, and then we start 2011 to uh, join the prize of the best employer. And then from the first moment we became the best employer of Holland. Um, another happy team in the north, Harlingen. Uh, and of course, we measured the satisfaction of clients. And what was funny that it's also from the start, we had the highest client satisfaction. Um, and the, the assumption that people want much hours of care was um, n not, not uh, true because what we, what we shown is that we deliver less hours of care and we created the highest satisfaction. So we also have some nice innovations. This is a radio program which started by one of our nurses. She said we should communicate in a different way with our environment. So every week it's a radio program, radio stockings. And this is, um, I will show you a few seconds of um, what one of the other nurses uh, started. It's called the Walker Race. And I don't know if it's coming, but no? Oh, then I just tell you there was this one one lady, she was 85, and she said there are competitions for everybody, but not for us ladies behind the walker, people behind the walker. So this nurse said, oh, let's start just this um, a competition. And she did it 2010 for the first time in Amsterdam. And last September, there was a national competition in the Olympic Stadium. <laughs> it, was, it was called the Olympiade. So there were hundreds of people coming all over the country with the walkers and had to got a medal for 400 meters or 800 meters. Uh, yes, it was amazing to see, and it's just by focusing on what people can do. Um, now we go back to the slides. The, the, I'm almost done, so I have four seconds for the last. <laughs> <coughs> but I, I had one minute later because of the... Okay. <laughs> um, now, as, as I said, um, we measured the outcome, the, the results of it. Okay, there was a KPMG report and two Ernst and Young reports. And at the moment, the governing is uh, our government is supporting everything what we are doing. So they say this should be a role model for the rest of the country. I was with the Minister of Health in China, and he was telling the Chinese mayors of Shanghai that it would became one of his most important pillars of his current policy. So I was quite proud, and now China wants to also and it's quite a big country. <laughs> um, so, and it, but more and more, we see that other industries also want to use the principles, uh, and um, I'm, I'm traveling over, all over the world, um, one side on healthcare and the other side on how to organize. So this is it, and this is what I want to achieve. My youngest son is becoming a nurse, he's 22, and I think we should leave the world in a much more friendly way than we uh, started it. 10 or 20 years ago, and we need to attract young people in healthcare so they can have an attractive, attractive job. So this was what I wanted to share with you today, and I hope you have a wonderful day. Thank you.